Well, this is a great time to highlight this week's innovation showcase because it deals all with lead safe setups exterior. You just saw our interior setup. Now we're going to take a look at this portable trough system from Butte, Montana and see how it can work for you exterior. If you notice, you just got a couple of PVC uprights. Nice and easy, nice and cheap. Anyone can do this. Anyone can make it and set it up on a job site. We've got pinned in on all the legs here, a height adjustment. There's another adjustment under here so that you can get your distance from the wall. And of course the plastic just lays right across here. This cross member can be any length that you want it. To, in this case, we're trying to contain any debris that's coming off the window. And then we just use a couple of quick clamps to uh, set up our, uh, our containment with the plastic, just draped over there. On the wall side then, a few strategically placed uh, staples will, will keep it contained. Great setup. One thing we should really point out on an exterior setup like this is that the RRP rule requires that you place 10 feet of plastic out in all directions. Clearly this portable trough system doesn't do that. We have far less than 10 feet. So we're not really sure where innovations like this are going to fit into the EPA rule, but there are questions to EPA out there that will hopefully clear that up. As far as LSW is concerned, this is something that the Department of Energy is quite excited about. It does a great job of containing the dust, especially in high wind conditions. Take a couple of uh, scrap pieces of wood, toss them down in the bottom of your trough, and that's really going to hold it down in the wind. The other thing that DOE likes is that you're not walking on plastic. When you walk on plastic, whether it's wet, icy, snowy, whatever, it can be a hazardous situation for the worker. So this gives you enough room to work on this window, in this case, for instance, uh, and, and it's collecting the dust and, and still being a safe environment. For the purposes of this episode, that's about all we're going to show on an exterior setup. Now let's hop back in and see if we have anything left to do on our interior setup. We're fully contained. Let's get to work on this retrofit. Step 7 is Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE for short. Now both rules, LSW and RRP, require pretty much the same amount of protection for the worker. So let's uh, take a look at Ben Jr., our PPE dummy here, and see what he's got on. If you notice right on top, he's got something covering up his head. You want to make sure that you have either a painter's cap or a hood attached to your suit so you can prevent any lead-based paint dust from getting in your hair and you taking it home to your family. Now for just showing you here, we do have a, a suit that has the hood attached. 
And personally, I like these a bit better. If you take a look at Ben Jr.'s bunny suit here, he's got an open collar. Plenty of paint chips and dust can get down there into his street clothes. You don't want that, so uh, you know, if you're a little more safety conscious, maybe go with the hood attached on your bunny suit. Next, you'll notice some of the other obvious items here. He's got on a pair of safety glasses to keep things out of his eyes. He's got on a respirator. We're going to talk about that in depth in just a couple of moments. Uh, of course, we mentioned the bunny suit. Uh, there are a lot of different brands on the market, uh, some of varying uh, durability. So you want to make sure you get one that holds up throughout your job. You want to get one that fits well. And as far as fitting goes, the bigger the better. These things are, are not a fashion statement. So you want to make sure you grab one that's big enough so you can move around and you're not ripping out the arms and, and so on. If we uh, go down to the end of uh, Ben Jr.'s arms here, we notice that he's also wearing a pair of disposable gloves. And of course, attaching that to the suit is just some duct tape. Nice idea there, very simple, easy to do. Following all the way down then, uh, our PPE dummy has on a pair of booties, also attached much like you saw those, uh, those gloves up above. Again, like the hood, you can get a suit that has the booties attached. Now, again, if you don't have that, you've got this duct tape on there. If you do, we still typically recommend throwing on a pair of those disposable booties over top uh, because they can keep these from blowing out on the bottoms. So let's take a closer look at this respirator. Taking a look at respiratory protection, you'll note that there are a lot of different styles out there. Anywhere from a full face mask or even a hood all the way down to uh, this little disposable N95. Now some of these are going to be acceptable for work with the RRP and LSW rules and some are not. Let's start with LSW. This N95 disposable mask is not acceptable according to the LSW rule. The bare minimum that you need working under the DOE regulations for LSW is a half face mask P100, N100, or R100. Now the 100 you'll note in all those means HEPA. When you're talking about HEPA, you're looking for a magenta color and you're looking for the number 100. What that 100 stands for is that essentially 100% of all particles, 0.3 microns or larger, are filtered out. Now in reality it's 99.97%, but that's pretty darn close to 100, so that's where you get the number. The P, the R, and the N, that just stands for how much oil particulate these can be exposed to. So a P would be an oil proof, an N would be not for use in an oil environment, and then an R is somewhere in between, it's resistant to oil. If you take a look at some of the other aspects of this mask, you'll note that it has a rubber seal all the way around. Now these masks under the LSW rule need to be fit tested. Fit testing involves first getting a medical release to make sure that the individual wearing it is healthy enough to wear that mask and then moving on and, and going through the OSHA standards to uh, determine that it does indeed fit properly. The first thing they look at is to make sure none of this seal is touching facial hair. Clearly this is not the right mask for me. So if I wanted to wear a mask like this I'm gonna have to shave. Or again, I can go with a different style of mask that may be slightly more expensive, but still be in compliance with the rule. Now for RRP, it does say that you can use a disposable HEPA mask. So it'd be a lot like this, but instead of N95 on there, it would either say N100, R100, or P100. One of these, or one of these. <laughs> 